transformation of functions again, but in this case, we're going to look at using the vertical and horizontal shifts, identifying all the different shifts and transformations based on the equation, and also based off of what we see in a graph. All right, so let's start out by just talking about, in general, the different shifts. Uh, basically, when we were in Algebra 2, we had learned that, you know, y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. And we knew that, as you can see here, that the k would control a vertical shift, so it control the shift up down. We have a horizontal shift that is controlled by the h itself. So if h is greater than 0, it'll move right. If h is less than 0, it'll move left. The other thing that we said was whatever you see inside, it lies. So like negative 3, for example, then that would mean that it goes to the right 3. <clears throat> if we have a negative on the outside, that means we have a vertical reflection. So we would reflect about the x-axis. If we see this one right here where the negative is inside, then that means we reflect about the y-axis. The other parts that we had were if we had a number in front, so this a that you see right here, if this a is greater than zero, then it's a vertical stretch, so we're pulling it this way. If it's uh, greater than zero but less than one, it's going to go through and be stretched this way. And actually, I want to fix this here. There's an error on this table. So if I look, I'm supposed to say that this is going to be 1, not 0. So actually, it's a good catch there. Uh, and then when we go through and do it in the sense of a number inside here, in front of all this, it, notice they're different, right? So if A is greater than 1, it's a vertical stretch. If B is greater than 1, it's a horizontal compression. So they do opposite things with a fraction, vertical compression, horizontal stretch. We'll come back to this page as we continue through uh, the rest of our examples. So we start here. So determine the family function to which the function belongs and then describe the transformations. So I want to figure what family does this belong? I see this is absolute value, so that I know that this function will belong to the absolute value family of functions. That means then we know that the graph is going to look like a V, basically. And what I want to do is I want to describe the transformations. So this negative First off, I'm going to drop this down here just so I have enough room. This negative means that we reflect about the x-axis. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we have the 2. So now when 2 is on the outside, here, let's move back to our example from before. So 2 is on the outside. That means I'm outside the function, so that's going to be a vertical stretch. So we come back here, and that is a vertical stretch. All right, and then this has its own factor, so by a factor of 2. So we'll just say by factor 2. This part right here, remember that it's x minus h, so that means that h is 3. So that means this is going to move to the right three units. And then this last one at the end is going to then move it up one unit. That's all we're asked to do here is describe what the transformations are doing. So now let's take a look at the example right below it. And I'll expand this a little bit so we have more room, more space. And in this case, this example, we have what appears to be a square root function. So our family of functions, then, is a square root. So we know that the basic square root function looks like this. So we know our graph is going to have a shape along those lines. And again, I'll give myself plenty of room. So this one-third. <clears throat> so we'll go back. Again, if I'm in the front, okay? So here's my A. My A value is in the front and my value is between 0 and 1, so this is what's known as a vertical compression. So we'll come back here, scroll back down because we changed screens. Okay, so this is a vertical compression. All right, and this is by a factor of 3, so compression.
And then we take a look at the other parts that we have here. So we have a two in here in the front. So this is going to deal with horizontal. And what this means then, okay, so we've got horizontal and these do the opposite. So on the outside, I'll scroll up, on the outside we had a two and said that that was a vertical stretch. On the inside we have a two and we know that's a horizontal compression. Okay, and again, you can reference what we have in that table then this is completely outside the square root. So that means this tells us it is going down three units. Okay, let's take a look at two more examples we've got here. So in this case, we're dealing with a <clears throat> function that its parent function is one of the names that we use or its um, family of function that it belongs to is a reciprocal function. And so if these are my axes, we know that this is what it would look like. We have quadrant one is filled in, quadrant three is filled in with the graph. I don't have any numbers in front. I don't have a negative in front. So there's no vertical compression or stretch. There's also no reflection about the x-axis. We have no number with the variable. So we don't have any kind of horizontal stretch or compression. Really all we have is just this plus seven, which would contribute that we move to the left seven units. And then we have the plus four completely on the end after everything is done, which then means this moves up four. Let's take a look at the last one. Okay, give ourselves, give ourselves a little space here. We know that this is definitely a quadratic type all right, so we know that I'm going to have a quadratic. So our family that it belongs to is of the family x squared. We've done so many of these, basically so much of ours two dealt with this. And we're going to end up with the graph that is a parabola. This negative in the front, and again, I'll give myself plenty of room. This negative that is in the front tells me that we are going to, again, reflect and we're going to reflect about the x-axis. Now, in here, the number that's in front of the x is supposed to be 1. So I kind of have to rewrite this. So I have g of x is equal to negative on the outside. Take the 2 out. And I'm going to have x minus 3 halves. Close, close, square. So this two here, just like what we had with one of the other examples from before when we were in here, uh, we have a two right there. And we said, okay, well that two gives me a horizontal compression. So same idea, that two gives me a horizontal compression, but this number in front of the X needs to be one so that I have to go through and factor out a two. So now, I am here with, like I said, a horizontal compression. And then our shift here, so it's three halves. This is going to mean that we go right three halves of a unit. And then that's it. That's all of the shifts that we have to worry about. And again, I'm using all of the information that's in this table, whoops, all the information that's in this table to go through and come up with what all the different values are, how we're shifting, how we're changing the position of stuff. So let's now go with the sketch of a function. So we're gonna, we know this is an absolute value. So I'm gonna just do the basic parent function that we would get here. Uh, again, I'm just gonna try by making a rough sketch and then I would go in the other direction the same idea we already have a dot there somehow and we just continue our way up so that's what the absolute value would look like normally on its own all right let's change colors and we'll deal with this next one so this means let's again figure out what everything means so here we're going to reflect about the x-axis so that means that this absolute value 
is going to open downward. Okay. Here again, I have to take the two out. So when I go through and I factor out this two, again, I'm gonna have negative absolute value. Two times x minus one half, close the parentheses, absolute value plus four. So again, this two is going to give me then another of, and back up here again, just so that we can remember what we're looking at. The two is on the inside, so this is gonna be a horizontal compression. I'm going to try to abbreviate a little because I know that I'm going to lose some room here. All right, so this is a horizontal compression. This means that we are going to move right one half, and this means that we are going to move up four. So my vertex, where it would normally be here, is going to move up four and move to the right one half. Let's see if I can, right there and it's gonna open downward. Now, the easiest way to go through and, and graph or sketch these is of course to do an XY table. So we know that at our first spot of one half, we are up to four. So if I substitute, let's say one in there. So I'm gonna come up to the original, just in case I made an error here. I'm gonna come up to the original, I'll substitute one in here. So two times one is one. Try that again. Two times one is one, really. Two times one is two. Two minus one is one. That's what I was looking for. The absolute value of one is still one. Take the opposite of it. So negative one plus four, so we're at three, which makes sense. This is supposed to be moving downward. Um, let's go to, um, I don't know, we'll go out to five. So two times five is 10, 10 minus one is nine. Absolute value of nine is still nine. Negative nine um, plus four, so that's gonna give me negative five. So I've got a series of points here that I can use if I can get my pen to move there. So if I'm at one, I'm here at three. If I'm out here at five, I'm all the way down here at negative five. And this should be a nice straight line that plays the uh, connect the dots. Again, it's not as easy with this utensil. So if I'm half away here, this is symmetrical, so that I should be there. And when I'm at five on this side, at negative five is where I'll be over here. So I go ahead and I'll just use the dash line, but it really needs to be a straight, solid line. So I'm really hoping I can fill in the spaces as close as possible. Not bad. All right, go ahead and do this side. And there's our graph now of what this function looks like. We were able to describe what was happening, and then we were able to go ahead and graph it. All right, so again, welcome to another edition of Cheraho Pre-Calculus videos. Uh, if you have any comments, please feel free to write them in the response or in the comment. Feel free to subscribe. Other than that, you have yourself a great day.